In this module, we will take on the challenge of preparing the various elements of a single entity's financial statements, namely the statement of financial position, the statement of profit and loss, the statement of comprehensive income, and finally, the statement of changes in equity, all based on a company's trial balance. You should have spotted that the statement which I intentionally left out from the list is the statement of cash flows, and that is because there is a separate section of the course which is explicitly devoted to that topic. The ACCA F7 exam questions, which explore the preparation of single entity financial statements, tend to be quite broad and comprehensive. And for this reason, we will use a slightly modified actual past question, so as to properly illustrate the approach which I recommend that you adopt if such a question does indeed come up on your exam. So let's take a look at the question and I suggest that we start by inspecting what it is that we are actually required to do. The requirements are broken down into three parts. First, to prepare the statement of profit or loss then to prepare the statement of changes in equity and finally the statement of financial position. In this video we will focus on the first requirement only, leaving the statement of financial position and the statement of changes in equity for the next section. We can now head to the top of the question where the opening sentence reads, the following trial balance relates to Clarion as at the 31st of March 2015, and what we have below is a lengthy list of items with corresponding figures presented in one of two columns. If you have not seen a trial balance before, let me quickly explain that this is simply a list of all of the accounts that are kept in the company's books, along with their end of period balances. Debit balances are presented in the first column, whereas credit balances in the second. So, for example, the plant and equipment at cost account features a debit balance, whereas the accompanying accumulated depreciation account, presented one line below, has an offsetting credit balance. Below the trial balance are some notes containing additional information. And what I suggest you do now is pause the video and take some time to inspect both the items in the trial balance as well as the notes, as we will be using this information in just a moment. Now that you have had an opportunity to get familiar with the question, we may begin. We will start with the first requirement, namely the statement of profit or loss. And here it is important that you follow a certain recommended format. First, always make sure to write a heading, that is, identify what you are doing. So, we are dealing with a company called Clarion, and we are producing its statement of profit or loss for the year ended, 31st of March 2015. Next, let's write out the standard items which appear in the statement. At the top, we will have revenue, followed by cost of sales and gross profit. Next come distribution costs and administrative expenses, after which we compute the profit from operations. This is followed by finance costs, investment income and the profit before tax. And just two items left, the income tax expense and profit for the year. So, whenever you come across a question which requires you to generate a statement of profit or loss from a trial balance, I strongly recommend that you begin by writing out and then following this standard framework. We may now begin to populate the statement first with revenue, which we take directly from the trial balance as a credit balance of $132 million. Because we will be entering all of the values in thousands of dollars, so in the same way in which they are stated in the question, we may, at the top of the statement, write a dollar sign, apostrophe three zeros, to communicate this to the reader. 
What I also recommend that you do is mark those trial balance items which you have already used. What you should observe is that we will be using each trial balance figure only once. So making those marks is a good way of ensuring that all of the information has in fact been used. The next item is cost of sales, which is a debit balance of 88,300 in the trial balance. We do, however, have note 3, which contains additional information that will have an impact on the ultimate level of cost of sales, as presented in the statement of profit or loss. At the bottom of that note, we read that no depreciation has yet been charged on plant and equipment and that it ought to be charged to cost of sales on a straight line basis over a five year life. Now the plant and equipment at cost is a debit balance of 77,000 and it is on this balance that we need to compute depreciation for the year. So that's 77,000 times one fifth or 20% producing a result of 15,400. The cost of sales is therefore the sum of the 88,300 already shown in the trial balance and the just computed depreciation expense, bringing the total to 103,700. As we have used information which comes from the note to the trial balance, I will tick the paragraph that talks about the need to charge depreciation. However, I will, and this is a general rule when it comes to these notes, come back and use it for a second time when we come to prepare the statement of financial position. So items contained in the trial balance itself are used once only, whereas information contained in the notes is typically used twice. In the statement of profit or loss, or the statement of changes in equity and for a second time in the statement of financial position. We are now ready to compute the gross profit which is revenue less cost of sales and this comes in at 28,300. Notice that I am putting a little horizontal line above this result so as to emphasize that it is the outcome of a calculation not an item of income or expenses in its own right. We take the next two numbers, distribution costs and administrative expenses, directly from the trial balance, which displays 8,000 and 7,400 respectively, leading to a profit from operations of 12,900. The next income statement line, finance costs, is going to take a little more effort to actually derive. Let's start with the fact that the debit column of the trial balance shows $800,000 in respect of loan interest paid. In addition to this, note number two states, on the 31st of March 2015, one quarter of the 8% loan notes were redeemed at par and six months outstanding loan interest was paid. The suspense account represents the double entry corresponding to the cash payment for the capital redemption and the outstanding interest. Now the suspense account has a debit balance of 5,800 which ought to be allocated between the redemption of one quarter of the loan notes principal and outstanding interest. The loan notes are carried at 20,000, implying that 5,000, that is one quarter of 20,000, should go towards lowering the balance of the loan notes liability, with the remaining 800 being taken to finance costs. When combined with the initial 800 already sitting in the trial balance, this makes for a total of 1,000 600 in respect of loan interest paid. To this, we add the 300 of bank interest, which being a debit balance is clearly an item of expense. We also need to consider the information contained in the note 
3 concerning the environmental provisions set up in respect of Clarion's property planted equipment. The provision is carried at the present value of the expected future outlay and therefore requires annual updating to account for the unwinding of discount due to the passage of time. This is done by applying the discount rate provided in the note, 8%, to the opening balance of the provision account, 4000 The product is 320 and this is the amount by which the environmental provision should grow over the course of the year, with a corresponding debit entry being recorded in PNL. When all three expense items are considered, the overall finance cost comes in at 2220 The next income statement line is investment income. The trial balance shows a credit balance of 500 which needs to be adjusted to take account of the information contained in note number 4. The final sentence of that note tells us that investment income in the trial balance includes the profit on the sale of the investment, something discussed in the preceding sentence, and dividends received during the year. Accordingly, if the dividends and profit on sale have already been accounted for, we just need to deal with the change in the fair value of the investments through profit or loss. We are told that the investments have a fair value of 6.5 million on the 31st of March 2015, which, given their opening balance of 6 million, implies a fair value gain of half a million or 500 if we are presenting the information in thousands of dollars. All in all, investment income, as included in the statement of profit or loss, comes in at 1,000 generating a profit before tax of 11680 And finally, we arrive at the figure for income tax. As you should know by now, this is in fact the sum of the numbers pertaining to current and deferred tax. Let's start with the current tax expense. We are told in note 5 that the required level of provision for current tax in respect of the year ended 31st of March 2015 is $3.5 million and that the balance on current tax in the trial balance represents the under or over provision of the tax liability for the previous year. When we inspect the trial balance we discover a credit balance of 400 in respect of current tax, implying that the previous year's tax liability had in fact been overprovided by this amount. Accordingly, for the tax liability in the statement of financial position to reach the required level, we only need to book a current tax expense of 3100 Moving on to the deferred tax component, note 5 states that as at the 31st of March 2015, the tax base of Clarion's net assets was $12 million less than their carrying amounts, implying a taxable temporary difference which, if we apply the 25% tax rate provided, generates the need for a deferred tax liability of 3000 the current level of deferred tax liability as shown in the trial balance is 2700 giving rise to an expense of 300 making the overall income tax expense equal to 3400 and the profit for the year 8280 now in the process of deriving this statement of profit or loss we conducted a number of supporting computations or workings. In the actual F7 exam, it is extremely important that you reference your workings so that the examiner can verify and analyze how you actually came up with the numbers making up the statement. Before we proceed to the statement of financial position and the statement of changes in equity, 
I would encourage you to take a moment and make sure you have ticked all of the trial balance items which we have used so far. Also, I want to make sure that you are not only capable of producing an income statement, as was the case in this question, but also the broader statement of comprehensive income, which, in addition to the traditional profit or loss, includes other comprehensive income. In the ACCA F7 exam, this is likely to feature just two items, namely the gain or loss on the revaluation of property, plant and equipment under IS-16 and the gain or loss on changes in fair value of those financial assets which are measured through other comprehensive income in accordance with IFRS 9.